Welcome back to Foundry, my name is Nidals and we are back here with another installment, maybe probably actually the last installment for now of this wonderful game. Uh, the more I've been playing it, the more I've been enjoying it and I think that's a good testament. Uh, in the beginning it seemed like, oh yeah, it was just another in the category of first person uh, voxel based uh, factory games, but it actually seems to be a lot more and I think that's uh, it's the combination of modular buildings They are super unique and very interesting also these really giant things and the star Space station it just has so much potential like what can you do with the space station? What can you do with these big buildings like uh, and the modular buildings? So what I've done between sessions. I've uh, thrown down a lot more uh, solar panels I've also added some batteries just to make sure that we have all the things we want and it was as we're cruising through the base we can just see that some some things all of this has been removed this was the xenoferrite because we've been replaced with the xenoferrite we made in the blast furnace last time so I think that is very nice as well uh, the whole base here is just chugging along and it's really just being constrained by the uh, the fermalite material and uh, this process here of course it's not going to be flowing completely but you know it goes over here and then at least at some point there will be something that will be the the constraining factor and that just happens to be here you can see there one of them is crafting and then it'll just slowly build now what are we going to do today well if we look at our tech tree that is pretty much completed I only have these repeatable ones but we've done all the other things we only thing we don't have is the fracking tower and there is a really good reason why we are there's a really good reason for us to explore that in this episode so let's take a look at why we want it this is our wafer production and as we can see the belts are not moving and if you look here this one is emptying so yeah we do have enough right now but since if we don't have any buffers, then there's clearly a problem here. So let's have a look in our glorious Minds of Moria build, then uh, what we have here. And remember, if you are a patron supporter, then you can just access the sec games, uh, either uh, on Discord or through Discord, and you can uh, just have a look at the base yourself and continue to expand or take a look at the designs and how I, for example, set up the bus and all the things that are in less detail. So here we have our Minds of Moria, and we do have a problem. Why is nothing coming out? Nothing is coming out because um, I thought it used to say like, oh, missing fracking liquid or ore vein core mining. So we just don't have anything. Core mining fracking liquid consumption, five liters per minute. That is nothing, nothing at all. And we have uh, seven of these in here. We could actually expand it further down because now we have the next mining level as well. So we uh, definitely need to figure out how this mining thing work or the fracking thing works in this case and we're just gonna have to go up uh, the way it works is that there's a new modular building that we want to build let's see can we go out on this side yes we can and lift up so if we scan our glorious building then it is right here yes so maybe somewhere in here just as far as I understand it you just have to place the new big building on top and it doesn't have to be uh, any it can just be, it is a little, it's a little bit more flexible in terms of it. Uh, let's see, where is it? That one, cracking tower, cracking tower. Okay, so it does have like, structures blocked by terrain blocks. Okay, so we th I think we need to make something even. Let's do that. So we've cleared some space here and uh, now we should be able to place this fracking tower. Okay, good. This place, fracking tower has to be placed on top of one of these mining locations and the idea is that it will then dig in and inject some liquid and then that liquid will be used for let's see where do we see some inputs well this is a big building so let's start from the side and see what we can build all right so a tower maximum something building is operational fracking tower throughput 100 and 750 liters per minute that's a lot and let's see what do we oh oh so that is the only place where you can is that where we can get uh, pipe connections on that side i don't want to do that uh so let's remove it and turn around here we go now it is uh, attached i am my robot and we can then get the pipe connection inbound here pipe connection great so there's a pipe connection it's not a pipeline it's a pipe connection so let's make a tower and we'll just keep making more towers don't know how many towers we can make we just make the full thing because it looks awesome okay i don't think it should have like this tower when it cannot put a top anything and pipe connection 
power connection, pipe connection. There. Okay, there was a power connection and a pipe connection. Okay, well, this is a pretty simple build. And it takes 5,200. So, let's get it done. Right, so in the meantime, now we need to figure out how to get a pipeline in here. And that's probably going to go this way. And I also see that we can get that. So, it's going to be a lot of exploding in order to get from get the pipeline in here. And, uh, well, we also need to build the stuff that the fracking liquid. So we'll uh, come away back and then start looking at the design of the of the fluid. So we're now back here with our base. I have built this pipeline. I don't know if it can pump this far, but maybe we'll just make a pump to figure it out. It's just going to be interesting to figure out. Pump, the pipe mechanics is something that's really still a clear mystery to me. We're going to start with a distillation column, and that's going to be exactly the same as the other ones i have my liquids in here or my crude oil in here it's not a lot coming in but i don't think i need a lot here uh, the reason what i'm doing uh let's see how many this is is this close no there's one space between okay let's try and keep that uh kept that in line and then i'm gonna get a oh where are you where are thou like finding things in the inventory is surprisingly difficult. Okay, this is a an inbound. Uh, that's gonna be here. This is a chemical processor, and I'll build it here. Right. So there's one space, and then I think it's aligned with those over there. Not that it really needs to, but I'll do it. Okay. So this will be making now the fracking liquid, which is air, olamide, and water. Okay. So it's not very much air, not very much uh, olomite gas, and it's somewhat of some water. Good, and that gives us a lot of that liquid. I think I want one more of these, and I'll do control Q. I would like to have three, but I'm not gonna put, put three, oops. Yeah. So, oh, I don't think that's correct. I think I need a little bit more space because that will be blocking. Yep, it needs more space. This idea when you're pressing uh, Control Q to get the copy it with the recipe, and then the control is also the land key is a little bit annoying. And by a little bit, I mean excruciating. Right, so that means now we have this inbound. We are going to get in here. And then let's see what is what. Uh, that is the gas. Here's the gas. That one and the middle one. That. And then of course I'm gonna get the liquid here. So we paired up the uh, the pipes and now we need to build one more of these things. Do I need to build it at exactly the same distance? No, but you know, I think they need the, let's call it breathing room since they are about this so this is the one okay this is towards me towards me we'll have a utility planet and then tower and i'm just gonna make it ex exactly like the other ones because then it looks nicer that one and that one good start production 250 and then we could get some power inbound uh, that is gonna come from here and let's see, where does it want to go? It wants to go on the edge. Okay, so that is there. Good. So that goes in here. This one will get built. Um, it'll take a little bit of time for it to get built. But we might... Uh, the thing is, this this will put out as a pipeline. But it needs to come in as a pipe. So this is why we have... I built one of these. And I don't really know what it is. Oh, look at that. It's just... Uh, it's a it's a big blob for that okay so that might just work so once this is built then we can put it in all right that's just gonna take a little bit of time and it is actually just completing we're seeing all of these uh, building drones retracting and pulling back and this is built so we build this uh, piece of thing here that one and then it needs to find its way Hmm. Would have been neat if this was 
if I had considered this, but whatever, I did not. Uh, then I'm gonna get here and yeah, and then just a piece in between that one. Good. So, is this mate working? Well, it's not really because I don't have the power yet. So, hook it up with power, and then actually click the start button. Then it will producing. Oh, it's actually using 5.6 megawatt of power, but one that is not a problem. Let's have a look at the inbounds, which we can't see because it's right hidden behind here. Well, that was that's there we go. That one I can look at. Okay, so it does get some. It has water in. It has. It is air in and water in, but not oil because I have not hooked up the oil. Because it's the one thing that we wanted to do together. There. There we go. Then let's see. Now we're getting oil is coming in, and that oil uh, might. <coughs> it's not oil. It's not at all oil. It's it's a, anything but. There we go, and that gets some of that oil might out. The oil might goes in here, and they are working making fracking liquid. And then the question becomes: Is the fracking liquid getting pushed out here? It's very low quantity, and that's probably because it the pipe is so long that it sort of spreads out. But hey, these two are working, and I should be seeing a, con a production rate of 2,400 per minute. So all we need to do is just fly along our new pipeline. Technically not a pipeline, but just a pipe. And fly back over to our fracking location to see if we can actually activate it. It should be powered, but it is not activated. So we can see it. It has been built. It's completed. It's nice. It's a little bit of a shame that it doesn't sort of reach above the mountains, but that's kind of on me. And it's it's just hovering. Nice. Uh, no struts, though. Hmm. Shouldn't I have... I thought, I thought I would have struts. Oh, well. And let's click the enabled. Mm, does it get any fracking status? Oh, it's starting to get a little bit in here. Oh, look at that. Times e to the minus one. That's crazy. That is a little bit too much accuracy uh, on the content here. So it's, it's clear that something is coming in, but it also looks like it's a little bit not very much. And maybe that's just because the pipes are filling up, or maybe it's just because it gets consumed as soon as it comes in. You can see the content is hovering around not really anything. 0 0.0001 liter. Uh, but it does go up a little bit. I, I have a feeling, or I, I suspect, or would imagine that it would actually be able to fill up. Like these pipes are empty. Um, let's go take the elevator down and see if they are actually getting anything. In because maybe it's just because everything is being consumed at uh, at this time. So let's have a look and see if it works, or if it's simply because it's there's not enough pressure. And if that if so, then we need to make figure out how the pumps work, or maybe it's just being consumed and everyone's happy. Let's have a look and see if the things start flowing. That's definitely not flowing. So things are not okay. And what does it say? It doesn't say that it has any liquid. Okay, I think it's uh, something with pumps. So we'll uh, explore the pump thing. It seemed to just need a little bit of time to stabilize as it has to fit up the entire pipe. I put some pumps in here. I don't think they're necessary, but they might help a little bit. The struts have also self uh, expanded here. They will be extending downwards until they hit something. So now it doesn't look as silly as that when it's floating. That's because it's up and running. So now we can see here, uh, what we're seeing, we are seeing that the fracking liquid is, there's a constant here of 1000 liter. And what we're seeing down here is how much is actually being consumed. So now it consumes 35 liters per minute, which is pretty much nothing. That's five liters per miner. And it says that the throughput can be up to 37,500 liters per minute. Like wh what? what is using that much? If this is using five per minute, but uh, the, the interesting thing, oh, I'm stuck here. There you go. The interesting thing is to see if things are coming out. Oh, look at that. We see stuff are is coming out here. Yes, please. So all seven look like they're working. Uh, let's go down to the lower one, the Telonite, and see if it's uh, how what it looks like down here, down at the bottom of our mine. Because then we now find out a way that it works. That, the issue is that you need no need to have a pipeline that goes pretty much everywhere because it has to go from an oil location which also has water, which is not a problem, and air, which is never a problem, then it's still going to be 
a lot of effort coming in here. And you can see each of these are working at their 60 per minute. Yeah. Or mining speed is 60 per minute. There's no way of, of increasing it. It would be nice if you could sort of crank it up by using more liquid and then getting it out faster. But it just means that now it works infinitely because you have the fracking liquid in here as well. Great. Awesome. I like that. So that is uh, that was actually the last piece of the puzzle that we wanted to to see and show in this uh, in this game. I think we've done everything. Oh, actually, we haven't. Actually, we haven't done the slag reprocessing. But you know, it it doesn't really seem that interesting to do that. But uh, you know, we can do that. Uh, but more importantly, I think it's uh, it's it's a good time to sort of wrap up the series and just give me my overall evaluation of what I think about this game because I think that it has uh, like. Let's highlight the, some of the things that are really cool. Like the digging out a mountain and just hollowing it out and making a giant mine. That's so awesome. Like those big mines here. That's such a, a nice change of pace from the usual mining location. Like this is cool. You're so used to the normal mining thing that when you actually get stuff that is different and has a different way of approaching it, like with these underground miners and now also with the fracking liquid, it's super cool. Like this is super cool. I love it and uh, I want to explore that some more. It also gives like infinite mines, which is amazing. And so that's one thing that's really cool. Uh, compared to Tectonica, then belts are working so much easier. And that's really nice. It's very easy to lay belts, it's very easy to control belts, it's very easy to move them up and down, which is absolutely amazing as well. I think that other things that are really cool is this part, this assembly line that just adds a new kind of uh, of belt system so it's not really trains but it's definitely something different then later on maybe we'll have as they say in the guide that there'll be whatever it says here yeah where is it building some machines assembly lines like later on there'll be other processes that will need to sort of go in and have different times that is cool because then this will be expanded right now it doesn't really do anything because it's just that one one line down here and you know you could probably get done with the with a simpler build, but uh, it it lays a foundation for something cool to to work on. These big warehouses are really cool because the the way that it, they interact with those big drones. I love that it's big drones and not small drones. It's a nice change of pace. Then uh, and also if we look out at that location, we can see it out here. There where we have the big cargo ship. That cargo ship is super cool. Like I'd love to sort of expand on that and just have lots of cargo ships. I also love that it's gigantic like it's it's bigger than the rest of the build like all of this build is just here and then the cargo ship is what takes up the majority of the space actually and i am now i'm wondering why it's not working oh it's it's just it's just slow it's just slow on getting stuff in here uh because it's slow belts yeah so it's filling up the fast as it can and it's filling up uh, faster than as fast as it can so you could actually just add some more input here but i thought that would be sufficient and maybe it is so that's the big cargo ships, the big drones, uh, the interaction with the space station, absolutely cool. I think these mega buildings are an amazing idea because it's one of those things where, yeah, sure, when it, it doesn't really do much. You could just build a big building or something like that, but it shows potential that you can tweak and design and they can uh, go further into this idea and have many more big buildings. And it gives a really cool uh, breaking up of the look and feel of it like instead of all of it being like rows upon rows which really really need a blueprint then if you can replace a lot of this part with a blast furnace not this but some things you could do that like it would be cool if you could take some of this stuff if, if basically at some point it would be like anything that is massive amount of small buildings can be replaced with fewer giant buildings because this this is classic normal factory game style with rows and rows of inputs and outputs and without blueprints or copy paste function, that's just really annoying. But this thing, you don't need blueprints for it. You can just design the thing and then it, uh, this thing here is feeding all of that. So that's pretty damn, uh, pretty damn cool. Maybe also for chemical process, like you can do all sorts of things and explore that in much further detail, which I really love. So very cool things. Um, the rest of it, like, if we look at sort of the, the zooming in and some of the things that I don't think are amazing, uh, I don't think uh, this is an amazing build where it's loader, belt, belt, loader to move things between buildings. That's clunky at best. 
And I can see that in the beginning, you're focused very much on this, and later on, you'll zoom out, and it doesn't matter that much. You kind of get used to it. But it's still one of those, hmm, it means that it's it's not as appealing to make direct insertion builds, uh, which is a shame. Uh, the hollowing out mountains, just even in the beginning, is super cool. It just takes a while, but it's still super cool to, to get that experience in. Science works well. Works well. Uh, the beep boop uh, here, I can do without it. It's not super harmful. It's just a little bit. I feel it's more cringe than cute. But then again, my kids loved it. So, you know, I guess uh, there's a little bit for something for everyone. So I, I'm, I'm actually, I think this game was, when it came out and I played it, I was very clear that it was probably not going to be it would probably be like a play and have fun, but then forget about it and then just leave it. But that's definitely not how I feel about it now. Now it's a game that I feel like, oh, I want more content. I'm looking forward to more content. Then I'll be coming back to the space and sh both showing you the new content that gets added, but also continue to expand. And uh, as the tech tree gets expanded, as new things, new purposes uh, are expanded, uh, the space station somewhere up there gets expanded. Uh, then we'll definitely be continuing. And I think I'll be continuing on this base. I think it's a pretty good base. It does the stuff that it needs to do. So that's uh, going to be the wrap up for uh, the Foundry for now. And we'll be back when there is a new major update for Foundry coming along. Then I'll be continuing on the on the coverage of this game. So this uh, this I feel that this game is uh, is, is becoming a stable in my uh, in, in my portfolio of uh, factory games. And that is a pretty bug, big fucking compliment to a factory game. So uh, awesome work and uh, thank you very much for following. It's also been fun to do this exclusively on YouTube where I can just tinker with it off camera because there's a lot of off, uh, <laughs> off camera stuff to be done with the uh, chopping and building and plateauing and all that stuff. So thank you for watching. If you want the access to the save game so you can continue playing from here and make it into a mega base, then that is for Patreon supporters. So uh, consider supporting on Patreon if you want access to the save games or you just want to help out on uh, the channel so I don't have to do any ads, uh, ad integrations or sponsorships. So thank you very much for all of your supporting. Until next time, take care and as always, stay effective.